I am still reading a book um, that I got not too long ago. I haven't finished it yet. Uh, a book by John Lennox, and I'm excited. He's supposed to be in a debate uh, soon over the existence of God. Um, the name of the book is Gunning for God, Why the New Atheists Are Missing the Target. Um, there was something interesting on page 112. He quotes Richard Dawkins, who has been called the leader of the New Atheist Movement, in a universe, quote, in a universe of blind physical forces and genetic replication, some people are going to get hurt, other people are going to get lucky, and you won't find any rhyme or reason in it, nor any justice. The universe we observe has precisely the properties we should expect if there is, at the bottom, no design, no purpose, no good, and no evil. Nothing but blindless, nothing but blind, uh, pitiless indifference. DNA neither knows nor cares. DNA just is, and we dance to its music. So, there's a ton of things wrong with that. Um, um, no design. Um, usually when you discuss the argument of fine-tuning with an atheist, you know, the, there's different elements within science. If things were a little lesser, a little greater, life on Earth would be impossible. We have ozone, ozone layer to protect us from the harmful rays from the sun. If we were a little closer to the sun, we would burn to death. If we were a little further away, we would freeze to death. There's numerous... Um, details within the argument of fine-tuning. Um, the logical fallacy that I've seen atheists try to do on the internet, even uh, Lawrence Krauss in debate with Lennox, um, is they'll say that most of the universe is not fine-tuned for life. Well, yeah, uh, I think the 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 name of the argument, the fine-tuning of the universe, kind of throws people off. And it's not necessary. it doesn't really mean the whole universe is fine-tuned for human life. This world and... This world and some of the surrounding space and everything is just right for human life and for the life forms on this world to exist. And so what, what they usually do is they try to jump to another part of the universe and talk about other places where it's not fine-tuned when the fine-tuning argument is speaking of life on Earth. So it's, they're just jumping out of a, out a category there. They're jumping from one place to another, and it, it really doesn't make sense. Then they try to use the argument of uh, multiverse which we have no evidence for. So they're using a theory to try and refute a scientific fact. And at that point, I say uh, they're the ones who are going by blind faith with no evidence for that. Dawkins says there's no good, no evil. So in an atheist worldview, there is no moral moral absolutes in atheism. Uh, Darwin, if you didn't know, Darwin was racist. You could, we live in a Google world now. You could just Google that and find the quote. But you know, this is what most schools are indoctrinating your kids with to believe in uh, atheism. That's the state religion. That's uh, um, believe in atheism. You don't have to worry about the Bible. You don't have to worry about Romans 14, 12. It says, so then each one of us will give an account of himself to God. Um, you don't have to worry about <clears throat> Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 14, where it says, God will bring every act to judgment 
everything which is hidden, whether it be good or evil. So, yeah, that's what your kids are being uh, brought up to uh, believe. Um, where has atheism led us? It's led us to Planned Parenthood, um, the slaughtering of millions and millions of babies. Uh, and, you know, it's, it's, it's something when I see, and you see it all the time on the Internet if you're involved in the Christian atheist debate, that um, atheists love to accuse God of being morally evil. But in a, in a world of uh, just all we are are chemicals reacting to other chemicals, even Dawkins uh, right here, he says there's no good, there's no evil. You have no moral basis to attack God's morality. When you do that, atheist, you are borrowing from the biblical Christian worldview because all morality comes from God. In your worldview, all, all, there are no moral absolutes. They're, they're just how can you have that? You could have people here believing certain ideologies, people over there believing other ideologies, and who's to say what's right and wrong? This right here, this God's word says what's right and what's wrong, what's sin and what is not sin. Um, so, <laughs> where has the new atheism uh, led us? Uh, they want everything to, to be permissible, because Romans 1 tells us that it's be when people reject God, it's because they love their sin, so they're suppressing the truth of God in unrighteousness. They don't want to believe they have a bias because they love their sin. Um, so, you see the LGBT videos uh you see them on facebook all the time uh of them making little boys dress like little girls which is pretty much sexually abusing these kids um the stupidity of people wanting to sue others for not calling them by their preferred gender pronouns I mean, th this, it reminds me, uh, if you ever get to see um, a Twilight Zone episode, the original Twilight Zone series <clears throat> called The Obsolete Man, please watch that. That is so where the new atheism is leading us, where the guy was on trial and the, the judge is screaming out, the state has proven that there is no God, which is um, laughable. Only fools believe that there is no God the Bible teaches. You know, it's it was something how I mentioned it in a number of my videos. Um, Richard Dawkins was in an interview, and they were talking about DNA and how the complexity of our biology and DNA. And he actually says, you know, it's possible that uh, there was an alien race that evolved in a Darwinian kind of way, and they created us, and that would account for uh, the complexity of our DNA um, and that sort of thing. You could, the, part of that interview is you could, if you get the DVD, Science Confirms the Bible, where Ken Ham uh, does that teaching. A great ministry answers in Genesis, and these are, they have on their staff credentialed scientists who have the same degrees as the atheist scientists. And, but uh, Answers in Genesis have scientists who believe the Bible is God's word, is in God's infallible word. There has there's a, been a documentary not too long ago uh, that they uh, that uh, Answers in Genesis was a part of called Genesis Paradise Lost. I would recommend that um, if you want to check that out. Uh Atheists also dismiss the fact that uh, we have a long, liberal scholarship has a long track record of being wrong when attacking the Bible. Uh, many times where uh, 
they said, well, that couldn't have happened, and this couldn't have happened. And then archaeology over and over and over again uh, proved them uh, liberal scholarship wrong. I made a, a, I gave some examples in my video called Defending the Bible. Um, there is going to be a time in the future, in history, in Matthew 13, 49 to 50, where Jesus said, so it will be at the end of the age, the angels will come forth and take out the wicked from among the righteous and will throw them in the furnace of fire. In that place, there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And of course, we know that Jesus taught the only way to escape that wrath of God is to believe that he, to have Jesus as the Lord of your life, believe on faith alone, that he, he died for the sins of his people, he was um, resurrected, and if he's the Lord of your life, you confess that with your mouth and believe in your heart, God raised him from the dead, uh, you will be saved. Um, important stuff to think about. This is, there's nothing more important than this. The only reason why people reject this, like Romans 1 says, is because they love their sin, so they're suppressing the truth and unrighteousness. And the truth is, uh, we all have the same evidence. And the truth is, we all interpret the evidence differently in light of our presuppositions, in light of our worldviews. There is this myth of neutrality. Uh, neutrality is a myth. Um, I quoted another video of mine, uh, who was a scientist, uh, atheist, um, where he said that we cannot allow a divine foot in the door. Um, you'll see, I've heard uh, atheist scientists say that as soon as you go back in history and say that a miracle took place, you're not doing science. So they have to view everything and interpret all evidence in light of a purely naturalistic, materialistic worldview. They can't allow for anything that has to do spiritual or anything like that. Do we have evidence for the spiritual? All around us. The creation itself is enough evidence. Uh, the complexity of DNA, the, the fine-tuning that allows, uh, that makes it just right for us to uh, live and, and breathe on this planet. Um, yeah, I would highly recommend uh, materials from the Ministry of Answers in Genesis. They have the New Answers books, a four-volume set. How do we know the Bible is true? That's a two-volume. They have so many good uh, um books and they have free articles on their website and I would uh, highly recommend that to you because it says in um, 1 Peter 3.15 that we are to be ready to give a defense for what we believe. I'm talking to the Christians now and uh, it's so easy for atheists to go on the internet and, and uh, find arguments against the Bible, but the Bible can stand up to the best scrutiny, to the best arguments against it. And I would encourage Christians, you need to study, because they are ready, so we should be ready. God's word commands Christians to be ready to give a defense.